Hi, my name is Michael Gore. I'm here for the CSI podcast. I am a really big makeup effects uh, fan uh, and one day hope to uh, do some makeup effects uh, for my own company one day. Uh, I decided to do, uh, do a presentation on uh, the history of makeup effects and how it became uh, the way it is today. During the film age, uh, a lot of the film that they used was um, the uh, orthochromatic film, which basically was uh, very limited color. Uh, the colors that they did react to were very, um, very harsh. Uh, basically, any red pigments uh, turned out to be really white uh, during film um, would actually turn the skin um, very white uh, and almost bleach out the character's face. Um, so to counteract that, a lot of the actors would actually uh, apply heavy pink grease paint instead of red. Um, they would apply black eyeliner and very dark red lipstick. Uh, this would also give the actors a really good um, new look. Um, it would give the actors um, a real clean look uh, and it would react really well to the film. Um, if it was applied too lightly, then the skin would actually look pure white on screen and their face would actually be just a white blob uh, and look real faded. The real time when the makeup really took off was when they uh, came up with a close-up shot. Uh, this was really important to make the actor or actress look more presentable to the audience. Two of the most uh, important makeup artists uh, that I would say uh, throughout history in the 1900s was Max Factor and George Westmore. In 1914, Max Factor invented a 12-ton cream version of makeup. Uh, if applied correctly, it reacted really nicely with the celluloid uh, film that they used, uh, which presented a really nice uh, color for the actors and actresses uh, during that time period. In the 1920s, uh, the panochromatic film was released um, and really took over the orthochromatic film. Uh, panochromatic film basically was um, allowed more colors to hit the film uh, and was actually considered a color film. The new color film was a huge improvement for the makeup and films. In 1928, Factor came up with the first panochromatic makeup. However, he died in uh, 1937 while trying to adapt theatrical pancake makeup into water-soluble powder. This powder would be very similar to something that you would see in today's Walmart or Publix. Factor really did plow the way uh, through film makeup, but it was up to George Westmore to really pave the road. George Westmore was a freelance makeup artist and developer. Westmore's children of six uh, followed him throughout the makeup world. By 1926, they were the premier makeup artist in Hollywood. Without these two men, the makeup world would not be where it is today. Many advancements have improved the makeup world um, tremendously. Uh, this uh, combination of the technology advancements of the makeup uh, throughout the times uh, combined with the um, graphic imaginations of the makeup artist today brings you some of the best uh, movies uh, the makeup artist can do. Some of the most well-known makeup artists in today's standards would be Rick Baker, Tom Zavini, and Wayne Tall. These three men, along with many other makeup artists, really have improved the way of the makeup world.